it's Monday how the heck is everyone today <laughs> hey everyone so glad to be able to be here for you again on this crazy Monday with another episode of crazy uh, true confessions of a working artist um, you know what it's funny one of the things that has always been a burning question especially when people would come into the gallery or in buying some of my paintings is where'd you come up with that name or what does this name mean or why is the painting called that and actually I should have uh, actually I should have called a painting that so that that would really kind of arrive you know uh, generate some interesting questions so I'm gonna just talk a few minutes about um, why I call the paintings what they I call them and sort of some of the naming names behind one of the ones that I created early in my career was called water flirtation and that was a painting I should always have slides here but I didn't um, it's a painting that has it's very blues and aquas and purples and whites and a little yellow and black and it kind of melds into this very cool it's an abstract and it sometimes would have a big water droplet with another water droplet kind of intertwined and that was one of my uh, first real, real melody paintings that I would do in a single sitting because it was just adding colors and just intertwining everything um, yeah I want it I will, now I'll post that in the uh, I'll post a photo or, or a link to to the image in the show notes here or, or on Facebook I'll put this in the in the um, description but the funny thing was is that you know water flirtation or water filtration and it's called flirtation because one morning and if for all of you that know me know that I do not oh, repeat do not like mornings I'm not a morning person um, I'm a late night person that's how I it's I've always been that way I love it it's kind of what moves me what what uh, what makes me rock and roll but um, and I think most creatives are pretty pretty much late night people I don't know it's stereotypical probably shouldn't even go there <laughs> but um, one morning I was dry I drove my son Ryan to school he was in elementary school so this was around 2000 2001 and I drop him off and I'm I'm on my way I'm on my way to work so I'm in the car and I'm at the stoplight and there's this giant shrieking squealing of wheels that comes pulling up right beside me and it was like you know you know you know what I'm talking about when you've gotten next to a car or maybe you have a car yourself that when you press the brakes though it just screeches and it was so high pitched that it was enough for me to kind of turn and look over and on the side of the this gigantic truck it said what looked like to me that said water flirtation and I thought what did that say I look again and it said water filtration so I kind of laughed to myself I thought, oh, okay I'm having a total dyslexic moment there <laughs> not that I'm dyslexic but I'm thinking okay I'm really tired and I didn't see that very well and as I'm driving I'm thinking water flirtation that's funny and as a creative person I start to mix and meld in my mind of okay if water it's such a loose it's a loose molecule or whatever and if water could flirt what would that look like so you know I'm at another stop line to get out my pen and I'm, I'm writing down because I always have a pad of paper in my car I write down water flirtation question mark question mark question mark and um, you know a few days later I you know I'd love to say I drove home and then you know completely pounded out this this painting but a few days later you know during some of my creative blocks or my creative uh, brainstorming I thought oh, what was that thing I'm gonna go look at my car my pad so I go out there and I grab it and I thought okay water flirtation what would that look like and I start just I just grabbed a canvas and it was the first one I did was a uh, 12 inch by 24 inch and I just started drafting and that's how I work I don't 
I don't sit and start doing, you know, multiple stu studies on a paper and think, oh, you know, and over overthinking. No, I'm just, okay, go in, start drafting. And it was the two painting, it was the two water droplets with the one little droplet in the middle, which kind of was cute because the top, you know, the, the two um, water droplets intertwined with the little, little droplet in the middle was perhaps two people. And in the melding of the two people became a little droplet. So I thought, hmm. And then around it was all this different colors and everything. So that, that ended up being a really a huge series in my work. So, and that was of, of the blues, aquas, some greens, maybe a little yellow, um, purples, um, teal. And that was, that was really, that was super cool, super cool. So that's kind of the brainchild behind that. And then um, another one of the paintings I used to call, or I, I, I mean, I still have the series, but it's called Cosmo Politician. And that series started in, oh gosh, 2000. And it was around that time where Sex and the City, you know, and Cosmopolitan um, drinks were fancy and all that. And, you know, um, you know, after after work, a lot of us would, you know, I was in high tech. I worked at Adobe at the time. A lot of us would go out afterwards to Gordon Beers or to the Agenda or to the usual that were all in downtown San Jose. And every now and then, you know, from from the, you know, you'd see the, the, the lawyers and all the business people, you know, finance people and the banking people in downtown, you know, kind of coming right after work, usually to um, like Gordon Biersch and there was Bella Mia downtown. So they had bars and you'd see a lot of people in suits and stuff. And it was um, interesting to see. I'm a people watcher. So it was really interesting to see, you know, who ordered what and um, kind of, you know, all this. So and it's no secret that I kind of listen in on people's conversations and not not to be a weirdo I mean I don't sit there and like completely like listen in but you know if you're sitting in a crowded bar and you, you're sitting there and you can't hear but hear a conversation over here you hear a conversation over here right here whatever and you get bits and pieces and that's kind of the stuff that I think so there was a, a conversation of these guys talking some you know, finance stuff, and then politics kind of came into the meld, and they're ha they were having a, you know, kind of a conversation about some political, whatever the news was at the time, and the one guy is drinking a Cosmo, which was funny, I mean, not that it's a bad thing, it was normally a, a, a chick drink, <laughs> it was normally a drink that women would order, but here's this guy, you know, he's holding this, this, you know, Cosmo with the little lime on the side and all that. And I thought, that's kind of interesting. So here's, I think about it and, you know, and on a net, grab the nearest napkin, you know, dig in my purse for a, and I'm, I start drafting out kind of a, a, a martini glass. And the first Cosmo that I did, and I'll also put that link in the description or on the Facebook page here, because I'm streaming to both right now. Um, it was... It was a very angular, uh, abstract, and very cubist because all my early work was really, really, really cubism. It was like cubism meets modern American pop art. In there was this very um, angular martini glass, and the stem of the martini glass was kind of represented a tie, which I was inspired by with the suits of these guys. And I'm going to tell you right now, I love a guy in a suit. Oh, my God guy in a uniform please oh my god um i just find that when you know anybody dresses up you know especially you know when when uh when men dress up in suits and stuff i just i just uh, it's just it's so nostalgic you know maybe that's why i loved mad men so much <laughs> but anyway different 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 true confession we won't go there right now um so that was one of the first Cosmo Politician series that was evolved from that. Um, I mean, I can go on all day, but I'll just tell you the one, the one big significant um, true confessions that I did. I'm mean, sorry, not true confessions. Uh, naming was from when I stopped drinking coffee in 2009. So, I, um, you know, and if you're a heavy duty religious coffee drinker someone who you know uh 
you know, coffee is, is, is a main staple and um, fuel for your life. You'll know what I'm talking about. And I mean, and I have, I'm, I'm a true believer that if you have a cup of coffee and you can see through it, you know, this is before cream and sugar and all that. If you can see through the coffee, ugh, it's far too weak to drink. So, you know, you got to have a coffee that's, you know, as, as, as dark as the iPhone screen, dark, you, you can't see through it and everything. I mean, we're talking a nice, robust cup of coffee. So, enough to probably where you could put, you know, pour it onto your furniture and it would strip the paint right off. <laughs> so, you know, as you grow older and your body changes, sometimes the, the, the loves of your life and things that you love to consume just are not, you know, they don't agree. So, I was having a lot of digestive issues while um, being a heavy coffee drinker and it's not like you drink it all day I would just have one I would have one really good strong cup of coffee in the morning and I had this big big mug that I, I used so anyway about three years I was going to the doctor and was dealing with all these stomach issues and she, every time she'd say Sonia you gotta stop drinking um, coffee got to lay off of it. Try decaf. No, no, you don't understand. I'm an artist. If I don't drink coffee, I'm going to lose my creativeness. You don't, you know, ah. And so it's like, okay. And so I don't know how many thousands of dollars and medical visits and tests later, um, I, I started really feeling the, the, the anxiousness from drinking coffee and, um, woke up one morning just feeling really lousy I mean completely lousy and you know I don't know if you ever get some of those little little muscle ticky things like like on your arm or whatever but I was getting those kind of everywhere um, you know you get them in your eye sometimes just a little muscle spasms but I was having those on a you know quite frequently and um, I told my husband I got it we got to go to the doctor I just I don't feel good I you know and I was losing sleep over this stuff so I was really kind of not not feeling good so we went to the doctor and she said she looks at me she shakes her head she goes you're still drinking coffee right and it's like <laughs> yes she goes all right you gotta stop I'm like oh I can't she goes you, you know what try this as an experiment I can I'm fairly sure ex this is exactly what's going wrong with, with what's, what's going on with you so um I st anyway I stopped drinking coffee and that was a Monday uh, the following Tuesday, Wednesday, I had like this very weird headache that was dull and throbbing. But I will tell you the honest, honest truth that when I woke up that Wednesday, uh, that Thursday, I woke up, I hadn't felt that great in years. So it was true for me. Hey, you know, you do whatever you want to do. I'm not telling you. I'm just telling you. Kind of, this is this kind of prelude story to to my next coffee series, which was my decaf series. So I woke up that Thursday. I felt a lot better, and I thought, well, you know what? Okay, you know, I'll give it a few days. Maybe this is just a, a fluke. But it it continued, and then I did a little trial about a month later. Where I thought, well, I'm just going to have one cup of coffee just to see, and my body was oh my god totally just rejecting this I mean my I was I was like for I'm, I'm gonna say good 12 hours and I know some of you might think well what's wrong with that <laughs> but with the buzziness I felt jittery I didn't feel myself my stomach was it was acting up again it was like ugh, just couldn't hang with it so um fast forward to another 30 days or so I decided I was going to really um I was really gonna focus on creating and feeling because I was feeling so good I was going to document this whole series so I decided I'm going to really uh, this was like months later I was going to work on a 10-year retrospective of 10 years of, of being a professional artist because that was 2009 so the following year was 2010 and I had really been I wouldn't say a professional artist I mean I've been an arts all my life but doing this style I really really started started heavily promoting and doing it all that in 2000 so this is going to be my 10 year um, you know uh, kind of just a just a an accomplishment and milestone for myself so I had um, 
created all these paintings. I mean, these beautiful, amazing paintings. Um, Return of the Mad Hatter, which is showing a the Mad Hatter type character coming out of a teapot, you know, kind of, you know, almost thinking like, wow, you know, it's safe to come out, um, you know, into Decapville. It's not a bad thing. Uh, the other painting that was my dear favorite, I sold it, kind of wish I hadn't now. <laughs> It was called In the Land of Lollipops and Lattes. That was my signature, signature piece. I loved it. It was on so many promotional materials. It's still a very popular ma um, print, matted print, coaster, mini, um, uh, pillbox, uh, mirror, a variety of different things. It was, we didn't know, we didn't make pillows at the time, but there's so many products that came from that one. So that was called In the Land of Lollipops and Lattes. And then um, there was Deal Me Up Another Decaf, which recently sold. And that one is the painting that ha it's the long, it's like 36 inches tall by 12 inches wide by two and a half inches thick. And that one was the rabbit coming out of the hat. And there was like buildings and lattes and coffee in the background. That was called Deal Me Up Another Decaf. And it was kind of like the magician. There was like a hat with a, with the, uh, the rabbit was coming out, and there's some like you know, uh, um, you know, playing card symbols like the club and the diamond, and the heart and the spade, and all that. So that was that was cool too. <laughs> so anyway, so many different things fuel me as far as why I'm calling a painting what I am, and what what you know what fuels me as an artist, and um, you know, just so many so many different things. Um, I usually check my phone at this point to make sure that I'm live. Hopefully I'm live. Does it say Sonia Paz is live? I'm just checking. Um, so this won't be edited out because we are live and I don't want to edit anything. But I just want to make sure that I am. Oh yeah, I am. So <laughs> here we go. Anyway, um, so yeah, a lot of interesting stories come about by... Um, experiences and things I see and things that I um, I hear um, you know just a lot of a lot of really crazy crazy stuff um, you know every every name you know I don't come up with things you know I mean yeah there's like wine in the valley and there's um, you know there's uh, there's a lot of different things in the wine industry like leader of the pack l-i-t-r-e leader of the pack and that one was the f uh, the blue background with the five bottles on it there's also the multicolored background with the same style of bottles that was called uh, five best friends that was the first one I did it was five bottles kind of intertwining so that was um, that was very cool it just reminded me of you know five besties getting together but they're kind of intertwined and it's very cubist and it's very colorful um, there was a couple more that uh, evolved from that which was the red background with all the colorful bottles was called Magnum Force you know for the Magnum bottle and sort of you know like this one's a very robust one maybe it was men as bottles instead of women and then there was the uh, gray the gray tone with red version of that was called Magnum Force Steel because the gray tones that I use uh, kind of emulated stainless steel and I just thought that was really pretty as well so anyway a lot of these are on my website if you plug in those names on sonyapals.com you'll see that and many others um, and I continue to create in crazy names and naming conventions and stuff that inspires me to um, you know that's those are the things that help sometimes the title of the artwork is what really drives the painting so there you go anyway if you want to know what a painting is called and why it's called, actually um, put it in the notes here or put it in into Facebook into my uh, Facebook page as also as well as here on on YouTube because I'm streaming to both right now with Restream. Just in case you wanted to know. Anyway, that's it for today, everyone. Um, let me know what you want to know here. It's sort of an ask me anything in the true confessions. I will hope to hopefully see you again soon and hope you're all having a great day and talk to you later. Bye.